and the strains of Beethoven's Egmont Overture fading away tell us that it's time for our midday play. We present Benefer's Turn by Roselle Mothervest, starring Fubby Prilk as Benefer Thruss and Venton Splatt as The Man, with the waiter, played by Patrice Broadbent... Oh, damn, well, I'd just forgotten! ...and Hilly Holly Handy as the peculiar name. Benefer's Turn by Roselle Mothervest. I'm Benefer. I don't know how you'd describe me. Ordinary, I suppose. Before John left me, he used to say that I was dependable. Dependable. I suppose that's fair. He certainly depended on me to bring up Maddie and Tim on my own, to be wife, mother, chief cook and dog washer and general bottle's body. Otherwise, what is my life? The library on Tuesdays, the Tesco superstore on Fridays, the occasional lunch with Julia or Bessie. I suppose it was a lunch that started it all. I'd arranged to meet Julia at a new Welsh restaurant that had just opened in Blesspig Street. Have you booked, Mamselle? Oh, yes. It would have been booked in the name of Parkin, I expect. I'm a little early. Parkin, Parkin. Ah, yes, un table pour deux. A table for two at un heure at one of the clock. Veuillez-vous me suivre, if you would follow me, please, madame. It's so full. Typical of Julia to want to come here. I must say, Welsh food looks rather odd. Look at the other tables there. Other women meeting, marks and sparks bags under the table. Pick up the children at half past three, then home and put the potato files under the grill. Then husband home from work and straight onto the green trail on Parker and old recliner to watch Wogan and Young Musician of the Year. It's all so, so... Here we are, madame. I'll bring the menu suddenly. Thank you. My God, that man's fat. I don't think I've ever seen a fatter man. And look at that woman. What an extraordinarily silly name she's got. Ridiculous. And what an ugly child. Voici, madame, le menu. May I ask you, perhaps, if you're going to be rude about the customers, you do it a little more quietly. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. That man over there is wearing a wig. It's such an obvious one. How could his wife let him go out like that? And look at her. She's got an even sillier name. No, that's still too loud, I'm afraid. It's upsetting them. Mrs. Thrust? Yes? Mrs. Benefer Thrust? Yes, that's me. Oh, damn. I, I wanted someone called Jane Wentworth. Table four, monsieur, over there. Thanks. Mrs. Thrust? Yes? Mrs. Benefer Thrust? Yes, that's me. Oh, thank God. Why? Uh, what is it? What's happened? I'm John Parkin. You're a friend of my mother's. You're Julia's boy? Yes, we've never met her, I don't think. Well, once, when you were a baby. But you've changed a bit since then. Oh, I should hope so. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Still wet the bed, though. Worse luck. Anyway, the thing is, Mother's been called out. An emergency. But she works in a knitwear shop. I know. There's been an accident on the Cursed Pig Road. They need a dozen fair isle tank tops and 20 cable knit errands urgently, so she can't make lunch. She asked me to tell you. Oh. Well, not to worry. Look, why don't you join me? Oh, well, uh, thanks. Yes, I'd like that. I enjoy Welsh cuisine. They tell me it's all the rage in New York. I've never had it before. I've heard... The menu, Monsieur Madame. My word, you brought that suddenly. Yes, he said he would. What is Primmy Boshlag exactly? <laughs> I'm sorry, madam, that's a misprint. There should be another L in it. No wonder you were puzzled. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, while you're deciding, I think I'll have the... <coughs> <coughs> Excellent choice, sir. How would you like it? Medium rare. Very good for you, madam. Uh, I think I'll have the same. Yes, you. Oh, and a bowl of... <coughs> in an instant. Very good accent you've got there, sir. What an attractive boy. Boy? Man, really. I'm old enough to be his sister. Benefer, stop it. You know you've given up men. So tall as well. He must be six foot two. Six foot three, actually. Six foot three? He's older than I thought. But I couldn't. What would Julia say? She'd be angry. Angry? Did I say angry? Yes, you did. Thought so, thanks. Angry? She'd be furious. I'm a middle-aged woman. Why should a boy like that look at me? Because you're an attractive woman, that's why. Oh, stop it. No, you are. It's true. Oh, please. I thought so the very first time I met you. You were two weeks old. <laughs> I still knew a beautiful woman when I saw one. My God, that man's smoking. Hey, you. Yes, you. Are you talking to me? Yes. You put that bloody cigarette out, will you? <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. sorry, sorry. <coughs> if there's one thing that really gets on my wick, it's people smoking in public places. <coughs> Come on, right out. The end's still glowing. <coughs> I'm afraid we're fresh out of those, sir. 
No, that was just a cough. Oh, right. Yes, I suppose smoking is a bit irritating when you're eating. It's just revolting. It's funny, though, isn't it? When I was a girl, everyone smoked all the time and no one ever complained. In fact, we liked it. Nonsense. It's dangerous, unsociable and unpardonable. Uh, excuse me. Yes? Uh, do you mind not being a bigot when my family and I are eating? What do you mean? Well, I'm rather worried about the effects of passive bigotry. I read somewhere that my children will have a 30% greater chance of growing up intolerant and overbearing if they absorb other people's bigotry. So if you're going to be a bigot, uh, would you mind doing it outside, please? Well, really? 